everyone. It's Miss Angela from the Fort Worth Public Library. Welcome back to another Fort Worth Nature Center Discovery Club story time. Today we are talking about something a little bit different. Today we are talking about camouflage. Do you know what that word means? Camouflage refers to the way that animals can hide or blend in with their surroundings based on their fur or skin or scales. So I couldn't find a song about camouflage, but I wrote a couple words to the tune of the wheels on the bus. You know that song, right? Perfect. Our first verse talks about how a grasshopper can look like a leaf. So if a grasshopper is green and kind of shaped like a leaf, it's very hard to see them. It goes like this. A grasshopper can look like a leaf, look like a leaf. Look like a leaf, a grasshopper can look like a leaf, that's how they camouflage. Can you sing that with me? A grasshopper can look like a leaf, look like a leaf, look like a leaf, a grasshopper can look like a leaf, that's how they camouflage. Now an octopus can actually change its color to blend in with different surroundings. So we're gonna sing that next. An octopus can change its color. Ready? An octopus can change its color, change its color, change its color. An octopus can change its color, that's how they camouflage. And a horned lizard can get down really, really flat and thin so you can hardly see it. So we're going to say a horned lizard can get really flat. A horned lizard can get really flat, really flat. Really flat, a horn lizard can get really flat, that's how they camouflage. And then our last one is about leopards. Do you know how leopards camouflage? They have a lot of spots that help them blend in with the shadows and the grass. I wore this sweater today because I thought it looked a little bit like camouflage like a leopard has. Let's sing this last verse. A leopard blends in with lots of spots. A leopard blends in with lots of spots, lots of spots, lots of spots. A leopard blends in with lots of spots, that's how they camouflage. Great job, everyone! Our story for today is called How the Guinea Fowl Got Her Spots, and it's based on a story that was retold by Barbara Knutson, but it comes from the Waswahili people of East Africa. Once upon a time, long ago, Guinea fowl had glossy black feathers all over. Guinea fowl was a little bird, but she had a big friend, cow. They liked to go together to the great green hills where cow could eat grass and guinea fowl could scratch for seeds and crunch grasshoppers, and they would both keep an eye out for lion. One day, guinea fowl was crossing the river to meet cow on the most delicious hill they knew. Guinea fowl could hear cow munching up the juicy grass, and she started to hurry to join her friend. But then she saw something moving in the grass. <gasps> lion! Now you may think that a small guinea fowl is no match for a lion, but our guinea fowl didn't think that. In fact, she didn't think at all. She scratched and scrambled up the bank as fast as she could and whirred right between cow and lion, kicking and flapping in the dust. Roar! shouted lion. My eyes! Where did all this dust come from? When the clouds of dust thinned, there was no sign of anyone, certainly not any dinner for Lion. He went home in a terrible temper. He growled, Rrr, and his belly growled too. Rrr. The next day, Guinea Fowl was at the hill first. She had her eyes wide open, looking for Lion. Soon she saw Cow cautiously crossing the river to join her. Slip, clop, slop. But Guinea Fowl's careful eyes caught a glimpse of yellow. She jumped up, half tumbling, half flying with her stubby wings, Lion looked up from his hiding place. Guinea fowl was racing across the grass toward the river. Wee clo clo clo, she called out to cow. Guinea fowl, that's where the dust storm came from yesterday, growled lion between his sharp teeth. But the next moment, guinea fowl hit lion, knocking him off balance and into the water. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Lion exploded with a roar that ended underwater. I'll teach that bird to chase away my dinner, he spluttered. But by the time he finished shaking himself dry, Cow and Guinea Fowl were safely over the hill at Cow's house. Guinea Fowl, mooed Cow gratefully, you have helped me escape from Lion not just once but twice. Now I will help you do the same. She dipped her tail into a calabash of milk 
Then she shook her tail all over guinea fowl's sleek black feathers, flick, flick, spattering her with creamy white milk. Guinea fowl craned her head and admired the speckles across her back. Spread out your wings, said cow, and guinea fowl did. Cow sprinkled them with milk, too. Flick, flick. We cluck clo that's beautiful, cow. Thank you, my friend. And guinea fowl set off for home. Whom should she meet where the path crossed the river but lion, still shaking water out of his ears and angrier than ever. Speckled bird, roared lion. Have you seen guinea fowl on your path? Oh, yes, clucked guinea fowl, trying not to smile. I believe she went that way. She pointed with her spotted wing to the hills far down the river. If you go quickly and don't stop to rest, you may catch up with her. Lion leapt up at once, not bothering to say thank you. A minute later, he realized that the speckled bird would make an excellent snack. He looked back at the river bank, but he could see no trace of her. He continued down the river to try and find guinea fowl. These lovely spots are just the thing for hiding in the shadows and grass, thought guinea fowl, who hadn't moved at all. And she turned back to Cow's house to tell her friend all about it. And from then on, guinea fowl have always had white spots across their back and wings. The end. Thanks for joining us, everyone. It's time to pass it over to Mr. Kenneth at the Nature Center to tell you more about camouflage. See you next time. Thank you so much, Miss Angela, for that wonderful story time presentation over camouflage. Hey guys, my name is Kenneth and I'm a naturalist here at the Fort Worth Nature Center and Refuge. So today, I'm going to be going into a little more detail with you about what camouflage is and how animals use it to survive in the wild. So, can you guys think of a time that you've ever seen an animal use camouflage in the wild? What about, maybe you're hiking on a trail one time and you saw a bird blending into a tree. That's an example of camouflage. Or maybe you saw what you thought was a blade of grass or a plant and it turned out to be an insect. So that's also a form of camouflage. So the basic definition of camouflage is, it's the way animals disguise themselves in their environment. Okay, so they can do this for a number of reasons. To disguise their location, maybe disguise their identity, or even their movement, okay? So there's a few different ways that animals go about doing this. Their coloration, right? So some animals have what's known as fixed color patterns. So that means they can't change colors um, in order to blend in with their environment. They just, like, let's use a polar bear, for example. So polar bears are always white, right? So those guys blend in with their environment based off of that fixed color pattern. So they're white, the snow's white, and they're just blending together. So it makes it hard for their prey to see them when they're trying to sneak up on them. So that helps the polar bear to survive in the wild. All right, guys, what's another example? Maybe, what's an animal that actually does change its color pattern? Can y'all think of one? What do y'all think that might be? A chameleon, very good, yes. Chameleons are camouflage artists, right? So they'll change their color based on their environment. If they're on a brown branch, then they can turn their color patterns to, into a brown color to match that branch. Or maybe they're on, they're surrounded by green leaves they'll change their color pattern to match those leaves. So that's what's known as an animal that can change its color pattern. What are some other types, guys? Have y'all heard of mimicry? So mimicry is where animals will mimic other animals in order to make you think that they're more dangerous or deadly than they are. So a good example of that are snakes. So some snakes, like the copperhead here, are venomous right so this guy actually is venomous and these color patterns are to tell you that i am scary stay away um, and then there are other snakes that mimic this color pattern in order to make you think the same thing so that the predators won't eat them okay so corn snakes do that some rat snakes do that they look very similar to this copperhead in color and pattern in order to mimic that feature so that they are scarier to other animals and they'll stay away from them. So that's an example, another example of camouflage, which is mimicry. All right, and then we also have disguise. So some animals will disguise um, as something else in order to make you think they aren't what they are. 
A great example of that is a praying mantis. So my little friend here, who I have raised since he was in an egg, is a great example of a disguise artist. So he will actually climb on this branch and he will sway back and forth and he'll make you think that he's actually a piece of that branch. And so that allows him to, dis to disguise in his environment so that when, a, when another smaller insect that can be his prey walks by, that they won't even recognize him. And so he could snatch him up real quick and have his meal. So animals use camouflage um, if they're prey hiding from predators and also if they're predators trying to catch their prey. Okay guys, so now that we learned a little bit about camouflage, we know the definition, we know some animals that use it, how they use it, why they use it, we're going to see some real life examples of camouflage in the wild. So some of those items I showed you um, at the beginning of the presentation, I've hidden around the building and we're going to go on a little hike and we're going to see if we can find them, okay? So let me turn you guys around here and let's get started. Here we go, here we go. Okay guys, do you see any, anything at all? This, no? Okay, well this, where? Yep. Yes, very good. All right. So here's one. We didn't see this in the beginning, but this is a good example. So turtles have these amazing patterns that they will use to camouflage in their environment. Okay, so let's see. Let's keep walking, see what else we can find. What else do we have here? Oh, do you guys see it? I think I just saw it. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so our little friend, Mr. Owl. So he, now he's on a fake branch, but as you can see in this tree, he would camouflage really well with the tree behind him. So this guy is a great example of the coloration patterns. Also mimicry because he kind of mimics a branch um, and also disguise. So he's disguised in there as well. So very good. Got our little owl friend. Say hello to Mr. Hawk who anytime he sees me thinks it's dinner time. Okay guys, let's keep walking. Do y'all see anything else? I feel like I'm maybe passing something. Do y'all see anything? Maybe on the ground? Oh, oh, I think I see it. Do you see it? Oh my gosh. So if that was a snake, it would have bit me. Well, at least if it was a real snake, it would have bit me. So look how well camouflaged these copperheads are in the leaf litter. So that pattern matches perfectly with the different shades and colors of the dead leaves, right? So they are efficient camouflagers to help them um, catch their prey and stay safe from predators. So that's a great example. Good job, guys. All right, we're going to keep walking. Here we go. What else do we got? Dun, dun, dun. I don't see anything just yet. All right, and we're walking, and we're walking. Did y'all see anything? Here's our friend, Mr. Owl. So here's a real life screech owl that uses camouflage. And as you can see, he is up top, hanging out up there. So very similar to the owl we saw in the tree. He does the same thing. Okay, so let's see. Do y'all see anything? Ooh, what about in this tree? Do you see anything? What's that? Oh yeah, that's a hummingbird nest. Very cool. So hummingbirds will use spider webs and lichen to help camouflage their nest inside of a tree. Keep it safe from predators and keep their babies safe. Look at that. So. When you're walking in the forest, a hummingbird nest is really difficult to find. So that's awesome. Here's another nest over here that's nice and camouflaged in the tree as well. So camouflage is used by all sorts of animals in the wild, like I said, to survive in their environment. 
So thank you guys for taking that hike with me today and helping to find those different items that I hid throughout to show you how camouflage works. I'm going to end this presentation by doing a slideshow of animals that we've seen around the refuge using camouflage in their environments. All right, guys, thank you again so much and tune in next week for Pelicans with Mr. Michael. Y'all have a great day.